Hi Loonies, members of the Luna Yoga Studio, and to you other curious people out there, welcome. This is the fifth episode of the Luna Yoga Podcast, As We Speak. I'm Lea Perret, a yoga teacher at Luna and a PhD student in mental health research at McGill University. Since the first lockdown, I've been missing the conversations before and after yoga classes with the staff, clients, so this podcast was the perfect opportunity to have chats with the Luna Tribe since, as we speak, the lockdown is still on. For this episode, I was inspired by World Vegan Month, which was November, and today I'm very happy to be talking to the studio manager, Francis Vicente, about veganism. Francis talks about the beginnings of her journey towards a vegan diet, the Jiva Mukti teacher training, and amazing vegan restaurants we are lucky to have here in Montreal. Um, first of all, how long have you been vegan for? Well, since Jiva Mukti teacher training. So that was uh, April, May uh, 2011. Oh, wow. Okay. And so as soon as you, when you, so when you went to the training, you weren't vegan no. at all. And then when you came back, you were vegan. You just made the switch. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had done a sort of training before Jiva Mukti training with Yasmin, who uh, has a studio, like a couple like a, a block and a half, no, of course. Now. but she used to have one in the, in the Point Claire village at the time. And it had started out more like a advanced student. She called it her advanced student a teacher apprenticeship program. And then I joked that it spelled out ass tap. Anyways, um, <laughs> I was like, that spells out ass tap anyway. Um, and then she turned it into a training partway through. So it was like kind of a program that turned into a training. And, um, and I remember Yasmin saying to me, she was like, oh, you're going to become vegetarian one day. Cause she saw me, saw how it was getting more and more into yoga and teaching and all that kind of stuff. And at the time I was like, no, there's no way. Cause I ate a lot of meat. I grew up with a lot of that in my diet. I used to, you know, joke whenever I was working at Lululemon at the time. And uh, there's like the food court because I worked at the one at Fairview. And at the food court, the places I like to go were like Korean barbecue. There's an Indian place there too. But when I would go to Korean barbecue, I remember they would be like, um, pork or chicken? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both. And on, ri on rice, like I, I, was, I ate a lot. And I ate a lot of, of meat at the time. So I remember being like, no, there's no way. I'm never gonna become vegetarian. That's good for you and your other hippie yogi friends or whatever, <laughs> but that's not for me. And then um, when it came time for Jiva Mukti training, I was actually like one of my concerns. I was already moving towards mo a more vegetarian diet anyway on my own, yeah. kind of with this thought in my mind, like I'm gonna do the Jiva Mukti training, I'll probably come back vegetarian. And I remember saying to that to Jen, I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking like, probably when I get back, I'll be vegetarian. And she's like, you're gonna be full on vegan for <laughs> sure. And I was like, what, really? And I got, I got kind of, it was one of the things that actually made me sort of second guess whether or not to do the training. Cause I just, I really wasn't sure about switching that whole lifestyle. And people used to say to me, I. I was dating someone at the time and he was like, you're allergic to nuts. How are you going to be vegan? Like right. a lot of the substitutions are, are nuts. Like it wouldn't be a good diet for you. Like all of these things, a lot of people like advising me against the whole vegan thing uh, and having my own sort of preconceived notions of what that and was. That, like. At the time even, did you know anyone that was vegan? I mean, I guess there was Jen, but did yeah. you? Have and Jen always calls herself like a relaxed vegan. I mean, she's pretty yes. vegan, like she's yeah. vegan. But you know, yeah. every now and again, and when she travels, maybe um, she'll have something. But she, she is, she is. But yeah. she's, you know, all the like she says, she's more relaxed about it. Um, yeah. yeah, she was the only one um, who I knew who was vegan. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so when she said that to me, I was like, oh boy. And I remember the last, I wanted to have like a last dinner before, last hurrah before <laughs> I'm probably gonna come back vegan. So we had a big sushi dinner because I was worried that I was like, I'm never gonna be able to eat sushi again. And that was the one thing that I was really like, that you uh, liked, that anticipating you liked. like missing everything else. I was kind of already over like red meat and it just yeah. doesn't feel good to eat, you know? When you take breaks from it, you start to realize it's kind of like 
heavy and and doesn't feel good. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, for me, and I think I think it might be the case for other people, and they just don't actually think about it or like pay attention to it, or they think, oh, that's just a normal like after meal feeling. Yeah, it's something um, you definitely have to be aware of. Like I was definitely aware of that as well. When I started to make the switch, I had decided only to drop meat first. Mm-hmm. And then um and and that was that went fine because I, I wasn't super into meat in the first place. But the the thing, just like you, that I thought would be really difficult was fish, so initially or seafood. So initially I decided, okay, for now I'm just gonna keep it in my diet until until I read a, a book, Eating Animals. Um, that, you know, was talking about all the environmental um, yeah. the impact of, of fishing and, and bycatch and all that stuff. And I remember reading this one thing, shrimps was the one that I, the thing that I loved the most and that I thought I would, you know, miss too much. And I thought I wouldn't even be able to really not have shrimp again. Um, but then I read that for every kilo of shrimp, you had six kilos of bycatch. So whatever they get from the bottom of the sea. Um, you know, that, that gets just like dragged along with, um, yeah. yeah. So after reading that, I was like, okay, I'm making the switch. And, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you came back from the training, I guess it was kind of, well, you, you said you were starting to make the transition, but I'm guessing that for your surroundings, like for the people around you, the change must've been quite, you know, drastic. So when they kind of when people around you, your friends were finding out that you had become vegan, um, what was the, what did they say? I'm just curious, because often you get a, a reaction from the people around you. So I'm wondering what, what they said to well, you. Well, um, the guy I was dating at the time was like against it pretty much. Like he didn't really, he wasn't really into it. The vegetarian thing before I left he was cool with, but when I got back and I was like, no, I have to be vegan. I think it like freaked him out. A lot of people see it as like an extreme life choice. And I think that's how he viewed it at the time. And so he was very, you know, um, hesitant and it it made him like worry a little bit. Um, My mom was, yeah, just confused and sort of continues to be to this day. I remember her uh, saying like, oh, you know, you finished your teacher training, congratulations, we'll celebrate with your favorite lobster. And I was like, no, lobster's not vegan. So I had to like explain to her again, because, you know, for them, just no meat, okay. But then, yeah, the idea of like no seafood, no eggs, no milk, no cheese, you know, then there's like, well, so what can I feed you? Sort of a, a thing. And so my, I always joke, you know, that that the first couple of things my mom made were like, she made a salad and it was iceberg lettuce and blueberries. And I was like, mom, (laughs) who ever made a salad? But I think she's, I don't know, maybe used to putting cheese or so. I don't know. I don't know what she puts in a regular salad, but she was like, what, is this not vegan? I'm like, it is, but it's, you know, strange. Um, or the time she got, so she got really excited because she found like frozen, like fake chicken burgers, you know, those patties you can get at the grocery store. First of all, didn't realize that there were two patties with a wax paper in between. She just cooked it, like fried it with a wax paper in the middle. I mean, it's not, again, since it's not real meat, it's not gonna, it's not dangerous or anything. So I just wax paper out ate it, yeah. ate it anyways yeah. um but she put it on like a raisin bun oh wow okay so interesting combination yeah. and then again i go you know what is this with a raisin bun? she goes oh my gosh is it not vegan i'm like no again it's just weird it's like she didn't know what what things to combine i don't know She's- yeah and i'm sure that the the i mean i'm guessing that there's some dishes that she would make that were vegan it's just that she never thought of them in that um, way necessarily or or not at all <laughs> i don't think there's so much like in the filipino food it's pretty much all meat and then even then oftentimes things will have like fish sauce or um right yes a little i don't know so i don't I think, I mean, yeah, like uh, pancit is is mostly just noodles, rice noodles and veggies, but then they usually put like shrimp or chicken in it and she just wouldn't put shrimp or chicken in it. But I think the concern also was like, well, then there's no chicken or shrimp, like what else, you know, I guess I just put 
like random i think she's put tofu in there before for me or maybe just makes it she does make it just with vegetables but it it was like a whole adjustment period for my yeah. mom um my nanny however she's she's great she's always been like um she really was the one who cooked for us growing up for me and my siblings like my mom didn't cook very much my parents both worked pretty much full time yeah. so my nanny was the one who made all the meals and took care of all of the housekeeping and all of that and she uh and whenever we have a family gathering we would have family gatherings prior to this period of time <laughs> what, what family, gatherings? <laughs> family gathering not recently <laughs> not every time in the recent months but, um i could always count on my nanny to make something and to make something actually vegan and also good like yeah. you know no offense to my yeah. mom she tries so hard but it's not always Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 for you, um, did you find that there were some obstacles when you um, when you made that switch in your everyday life with friends with with social gatherings, like when you go to a restaurant? Oh with your yeah, 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 yeah. So the first thing was like while we were in teacher training, it was so easy because it was like a buffet of mm -hmm. you know. All the you just go and you take they had a vegetarian line too so you just made sure not because they would have eggs and stuff okay. but um besides that it was all all vegan for us so that was easy when you're the food's there for you and when i got back it was like it wasn't in my regular habits like i didn't really know and you have to remember this is nine years ago and i mean it wasn't obviously it gets better every year but at that time there was like oh vive and oh, yeah. the sauce, cri de sauce, which was a lot of nuts because it was raw. Yeah. They replace a lot with nuts. And very there was a place, I forget what it was called now, but it was like a vegan, a little vegan épicerie that eventually closed down because it could it didn't last very long. And and that was kind of that was kind of it. Like, you yeah. know, vegetarian, like commensal, I think maybe at the time, but there wasn't I was eating a lot of um Oh, there was um there was this little restaurant near um, Moksha uh, on Saint Laurent. It was called uh, Jubar. So it was mostly she would do like smoothies and stuff, but she would also do a meal a day. Her name was uh, Chantal, uh, and she so she and her thing was all vegan. So I'd eat uh, when I discovered that place because a lot of the I was working at Studio Bliss at the time, and a lot of the massotherapists would go there. Um, and they told me about it and it was like one, she would just make one meal every day, but it was always vegan and it was like 10 bucks for the plate or something like yeah. really affordable. Um, and it was like right by work. So, so I ate there a lot, but it was hard. It was hard to figure out, you know, what to cook and what to buy and how to, you know, replace things. Yeah. And I guess since we're on the on the the topic of of restaurants, the because obviously now there's been a big boom in in oh. vegan restaurants in Montreal. <laughs> yeah, what are your favorites? Oh my god! <laughs> okay, well we, as you know, we moved across the street from Sushi Momo, which is yeah amazing yes. and we're also basically like two doors down I'm, I'm just telling people where i live um two doors <laughs> down from uh, nil bleu which isn't vegan but they have an amazing vegan um, platter and then i mean christian who used to come to the studio he has so many new restaurants now he opened casa kaizen which is on the pain and c'est laurent um more on the actually on the pain but at the corner and then uh, no Palito, which is on Saint Laurent, but also at, at, on the corner of Saint Laurent du Pain. So they're kind of like next to each other, around the corner from each other. And those are both um, vegan ones, like uh, Japanese Mexican fusion, and the other ones like Mexican um, like sandwichy uh, sandwich traditional sandwiches. Um, so those are great. Hadzi, which opened recently ish, it's been around for a while now, and that's all vegan as well and Italian, so good. Uh, Cafe de Campi, which is pretty much vegan. They do have some, um, I think they have cow milk for their lattes and stuff, but everything else is vegan. Um, what else? So there's just a couple. Those are the ones that that come to me. To, oh, Sophie Sucre, of course. Sophie Sucre is yeah, a the yeah. owner of Sophie Sucre also used to, she would come to my classes at Bliss when I taught there. Um, so yeah, those are 
Is it? Is there also a vegan donut place? I think there right? is La yeah. Benefi, yeah. and I haven't been there yet. And I know Leche Desserts also has a few um, vegan donut options, and I think Donuts as well because I feel yeah. like Jen Silver has brought that to the studio before. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of options now. Uh, Montreal is uh, is an easier city to be. Uh, and so many places that have just vegan options if they're not a fully vegan place. Like when just walking around our neighborhood because we moved here in April, um, everything was closed unfortunately at the time. But we would just like take a peek at the menus around, and a lot of them would have vegan options yeah. or options for vegan substitution. So it, it is, it's become more and more of, and the vegan festival that happens now every year uh, in Montreal. So it's it's become more and more of a, of a regular thing. So it's- Yeah. And I find that having this kind of environment is, is also encouraging. Um, I don't know for you, but um, for myself uh, in terms of keeping a, um, I'm, I'm also more of a relaxed uh, vegan and during my pregnancy I was definitely more of a vegetarian um, and I find that for the vegan diet um, it's nice for me to surround myself either with you know people that also uh, keep to try to keep to a vegan diet or at least um, read things that will kind of keep my um, you know my interest in trying to keep this vegan diet um, to to keep motivated to keep being inspired by this uh, by this lifestyle and I was wondering if it was the same thing for you do you yeah to try to I guess how do you, how do you stay vegan you know I I know of people that have been vegan for a long time or vegetarian for a long time and then for some reason they start craving meat for example and then, and then, you know, they make the switch the other way. So they stop being vegan. They stop being, being vegetarian. So I, I wonder if to keep this, this kind of diet, um, you know, do you really have to keep um, reading things so that you are inspired and so that you stick to that diet? I think it comes down to motivation because people are motivated by different reasons, right? Some people are like, oh, I want to lose weight, so I'm going to try the vegan diet. Or yeah, I don't think that's a good environment. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's not, if you eat like, if you eat French fries and potato chips all day, yeah. <laughs> um, or, you know, I'm like more eco-conscious, the environment's important yeah. to me, so I go on a vegan diet or, uh, yeah, just more health-minded, these sorts of things. But if, the motivation for you ultimately is to cause less suffering in the world for the greatest number of beings possible then it becomes like it becomes a really difficult thing to go back from that you know yes. and the, and the kind of movies that we saw during teacher training which um you know it's always like a difficult thing because i teach the as you know the yoga and veganism section of of teacher training it's always tough it's not a you know it's a it's a challenging thing to talk about to discuss to show people you don't want to upset people but um but it was something that was really impactful for me and i couldn't unsee all of those things all of those images or pretend like that wasn't something happening somewhere else in the world and that that wasn't at the at the basis of all of our you know um agriculture food and and uh, food and uh, all of the things in our diet and and the way that these um, animals are treated it was really really um impactful for me to see that and so i can't really there's no there's nothing so you, you made the switch and and the motivation well, really started from yeah. the training you made the switch and you you know you're not thinking you're not tempted in any way to to go back it's not i mean when people are like listen bacon tastes good i know bacon tastes good you know like or or like yeah. chicken wings also and more and more um is you know there are vegan versions of these that you can that are you know close pretty close and getting even better better and better all the time if you were still tempted by those things which you know every now and again you might be normal um, but it's just not worth for me 
for the reasons that I do it to go back and eat. I'm not, I'm definitely not tempted to eat like a steak or anything like this. And now that there's like a like vegan sushi that's just as delicious, you wouldn't even, you know, be able to tell necessarily that it's vegan, like all of these things, all of these options available. So there's less and less of that temptation. And again, if, you're, if your motivation behind it is, is about compassion for animals, then there's kind of no, there's nothing that would make you, there's no taste, you know, that would be worth giving that up for. Yeah. yeah. I guess like, like you said, it boils down to um, also what is your initial, you know, motivation. If it's more about the environment, then it might be easier to, to think, um, well, if I, you know, get um, meat from right outside Montreal that are, you know, free range and all these things, um, then, then you might kind of find loopholes mm -hmm. um, in a way to, um, to switch back or to be a little bit more, well, I'll say, you know, relaxed about your diet and let yourself, um, have meat from time to time, which again is fine, but, um, I guess it depends what your, what the motivation is, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it definitely, but I agree with you. I mean, it's helpful to have a community of people and that's and basically the Jivamuta community has been a really big support for that and is always something that is talked about and always something that um, is, is, is made as an important point and point of focus. So it is helpful to have that community sort of behind you in a way. Uh, and know that there's all of these other yogis around the world that feel the same way and practice the same things and are just as passionate about it. Um, and yeah, and more and more, like you said, like it's it's growing in Montreal. There's the festival. There's all these restaurants, and I think there is just a a, a, a consciousness around it now yeah. that's that's growing. So um, yeah, and and a lot of misconceptions about you know health wise about having a vegan diet, I think are more and more being, uh, um, well, people are discovering, for example, that um, and like I remember someone when they discovered I was vegetarian and I was running, I was biking, I was doing yoga and they were like, how, how do you get enough protein? Yeah. And I was like, well, there's protein in vegetables, uh, you know, I have tofu, like there's protein in many other things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, the recurrent one of the recurrent questions also was about iron you know and i was um i have a tendency genetically to have low iron levels but i haven't had to take any supplements uh, as long as i've been a vegetarian ironically i've had to take supplements before i switched to a vegetarian diet so so i think there's still a lot of um misconceptions um you, around, I, I do take a b12 supplement yeah which is difficult to get um, when you're on a vegan diet out of your out of your usual diet, and um, and Jay is just very health conscious and all this stuff. So he has me taking like omega. He gets me a vegan omega three, right. um, and what else do I take? I just take you know like vitamin D, vitamin K, mm -hmm. um, vitamin C, that kind of stuff. But that's just like overall. Health. Yeah, it's not necessarily linked to the to the diet. And I I heard this week actually for um, B12, which is a vitamin that we need. And as you said, um, if if you're vegan, it, it is something that um, you you should you know be careful um, uh, on. But um, apparently, if you have it was two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, which has a lot of B12 in it, um, you're getting your daily dose. Okay. So. So it's not that hard and nutritional I'm making a vegan mac and cheese with and it had nutritional yeast so oh yeah yeah it's de it's delicious i i love i love it ever since i've discovered it it's in everything now soups salads all yeah. the things you can just pop on there yeah for sure yeah <laughs> cool and i i wanted to end i know that um um luna just had a, a vegan month and there was a, there's a group on facebook that um people can join um, but since November is, is ending and December is going to be starting, um, I was wondering if you had a message to people that um, want to continue maybe with the vegan diet if they tried it out for November, 
or, or at least if they want to have more of the vegan diet in their lives, even if it's not completely exclusively uh, vegan. Yeah, we're actually um, extending it. The, yeah. the, because it was for, for vegan month, um, but I think we'll just keep the group open in general. But the idea was to have a contest, which we didn't really like advertise well, because there's so much going on. But um, oh. we're going to extend it till the end of December and okay. try to keep putting um, blog posts up of, of vegan recipes. I put a couple up there. I have some good holiday ones that I, I'd like to share too. And the idea is to try to get people sharing there as much as possible. It's been nice to see people actually being like, hey, I, I like to use this, or oh, this is the restaurant that I go to, or this is the blog that I always refer to. So that's been nice to have some exchange uh, in that way. Uh, but um, I did contact, I reached out to Christian and I asked him if he would um, be willing to donate a prize. So there's going to be a prize for every time anybody um, posts something or shares something to the page, they get entered in, like it's, it counts as an entry. And uh, the prizes are a $50 gift certificate to Casa Kaizen. Wow. Or a $25 gift certificate to Nopalito. So um, we're hoping. That's we're great. We're going to yeah. <laughs> advertise it more. And. Um, Hope that more people participate and and, uh, and take part. But yeah, it's just, I mean, this is coming from a place of like having started out again nine years ago when, when the selection was a lot more slim. It that it I just feel like it's so easy now to be vegan, but that's you know, coming from my perspective. I can see how it would be challenging for people who really love their, you know. I don't know. Yeah, their shrimp or their chicken wings, yeah. whatever. So yeah, encourage them, and and I do this with my family. You know, get them to try different vegan restaurants that maybe have sort of substitutions for this. Um, and I think, I mean, the best thing to to be is just an example. And so, you know, bring really tasty vegan foods to to family gatherings only between the 24th and the 26th. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know whenever you have the chance um, to either bring family to a vegan place or to make a really tasty vegan meal to be um sharon always says you know the best example is is to be a joyful vegan you know not a preachy one not yeah. a uh, a judgmental one mm -hmm. uh if you want anyone if you want to try to um encourage people you have to do it in an encouraging way you know so it's gonna make them want to change and the only thing again this is my, my sharonism is coming out the only thing powerful enough to create lasting change is love and compassion so you know if you're looking to get people to rethink things in their lives and and this is a huge thing this is part of it's just ingrained embedded in our culture so if it's something that you're asking them to really take a hard look at you can only do that um, from a place of compassion it's the only way wow that's a that's a great uh, it's a great message and a great way to to end this thank you francis I hope you enjoyed this conversation. You can take Francis's Jiva Mukti class on Tuesdays at noon or Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And if you are interested, Luna Yoga has an online store with books related to veganism, such as Cash Cow, Jiva Mukti, and many other vegan, eco-friendly products at lunayoga.ca. If you wanted to know more about the environmental impact of having a non-vegan diet, I personally recommend reading Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. If you want, you can also join the Luna Yoga Facebook group called Luna's Vegan Community Forum so that you can share or find vegan recipes or restaurants. Thanks for listening to this episode and until the next one, I wish you happy holidays. Namaste.